For the past couple of years or so, Intel has dominated the processor market, and honestly, AMD wasn't putting up much of a fight. Sure, they released a processor lineup here and there, but for the most part, most of their processors gave you bad performance for the price you were paying. But that story changes completely with AMD's new processor lineup of Ryzen, and honestly, there's never been a better time to buy a processor for gaming, editing, or whatever you like to do. Now, Intel's 8th generation of CPUs are on the way very soon, but I thought I'd do a video about the best processor you can buy on the market today. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. So, I'm going to be splitting this video up into three sections, and those sections are going to be the best budget processor, the best gaming processor, and the best all-around processor. So, starting off with the best budget processor, we have the Ryzen 3 1200 for $110. So this is a processor that was released as a part of AMD's budget line of Ryzen and is intended to compete with Intel's i3s, but honestly, the performance stretches way beyond the performance that an i3 can give you. Now, sure, looking at benchmarks from games, the Ryzen 3 is about 5-10% to slower than an i3-7100, which is probably the most comparable processor in terms of price when it comes to gaming performance, but the story changes when you're doing anything else. When you're looking at rendering videos or converting files, this processor is anywhere from 10-20% to faster than the i3, and that isn't even the best part. The best part is that this processor is overclockable, and when you overclock this thing, its performance is much more similar to that of an i5's. The reason this processor is so much faster and has so much more potential than your average i3 is because it has 4 cores, which is 2 more than an Intel series of i3's. This along with being overclockable makes this processor a great all-around budget processor to use, which is why it made the list. Up next, for the best gaming processor, we have the i5-7600K for $220. Now, I know I just put Ryzen on a high horse and compared them to Intel constantly, but seriously, the i5-7600K is a great processor for the money. Clocked at 3.8GHz, it has 4 cores, 4 threads, and at only $220, this thing is incredible for gaming. Now, some of you may say in the comments that the i7-7700K is a way better way to go in terms of gaming performance, but honestly... The i7-7700K only offers about 10% more performance in terms of gaming, and is $100 more expensive. So I went for the i5-7600 just because of price to performance. Now, another big elephant in the room, of course, is Ryzen. And some of you may be asking right now why I didn't include one of the Ryzen 5s for the best gaming processor. And that's sort of simple to me. Ryzen has more cores, and even though more cores usually means more power, that doesn't necessarily translate to gaming. Most games only take advantage of 4 cores at most for their games, and since Intel has more poor, powerful single core performance, I chose this processor because I thought it would be utilized the most for gaming. And all in all, you'd be getting the absolute most out of your money. Now, if you are looking for a processor to do gaming and maybe a few other things such as video editing and media encoding, that is where the next processor comes in, and for the best all-around processor, I chose the Ryzen 7 1700 for $300. Now, the Ryzen 7 1700 is the base level processor chip of the Ryzen 7 series, and honestly, it gives you fantastic performance for the money you spend on it. It's clocked at 3GHz and is an 8-core, 16-thread processor. Now, in terms of gaming, it is going to be a little slow because single-core performance isn't the strongest, but in terms of video editing and media encoding, this thing will be zippy fast, and on top of that, you can overclock this processor to give you more up-to-par performance in games and absolutely fantastic performance when it comes to video editing and rendering. Now, some of you may be wondering why I didn't choose the Ryzen 7 1800X or a higher-end Ryzen 7, and the reason is because the only difference I can seem to find between the Ryzen 7 1700 and a higher-end R7 like the 1800X is the clock speed. And since you can overclock the R7 1700, why would you have to get the 1800X and pay $150 more? For the price of $300, you can expect fantastic gaming performance and fantastic speeds when it comes to video editing and rendering. So, with all three areas covered in today's video, I hope you guys have a better understanding of processors and now know which processor you'd like to buy. And that's about it for today's video. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you didn't, go ahead and leave a dislike. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, then go ahead and subscribe and turn on post notifications, and please tell me down in the comments below what video you want to see me do next time. And that's all for me, but like always, I'll see you guys all later. Bye guys!